I think we are recording and broadcasting live to Facebook, so uh, we will go ahead and get kicked off. Uh, I just wanted to thank everyone for joining us today uh, on our fourth Zoom call with one of our medical board advisors. So this is really exciting, and I know this is one that everyone's really been looking forward to, to have the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with Dr. Coolen. Uh, I'm Casey Fisher, and I'll be your host again today on behalf of the Cool and Degrees Syndrome Foundation. And I am also a cool mom to Hudson, who is nine years old and was diagnosed about three and a half years ago. I am honored today to share the screen with Dr. David Coolen, clinical geneticist at Radboud University Medical Center in the Netherlands. And since the inception of, or recognition of Kool and Debris, which we'll talk about a lot today, in 2006, uh, this syndrome has been his primary focus of research. So, Dr. Kulin, welcome. I know everyone's really excited to see you today. Yeah, thank you. So, very, uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm, I'm glad to, to talk to you about uh, um, Kool and Debris. So, I will give a presentation, but I'm really happy to... Um, um, to answer all the questions that uh, that there are, yeah. Excellent, and and it, I think it's important for me to point out that we had so many questions um, that we we will get to as many of them as we can today. But I just appreciate all the families sharing them with us, and they were they were excellent. And as you know, Dr. Poole and our families are well informed and always have really great things to ask, and are always excited to learn. Um, so again, we'll do our best to get through them, but we may not be able to get through all of them today. Um, and Perfect. lastly, just before we dive in, I just wanted to mention that we, we are meeting today thanks to the KDVS Foundation and their commitment to educate, increase awareness, and promote research for the support and enrichment of individuals living with KDVS and their families. And so we'll mention this again at the end, but if you have you know, additional questions or want to look at the foundation, please visit kdvsfoundation.org. All right, so let's dive right in because we have a lot to get to. So um, one of the things, Dr. Coolen, we always do at the start of these webinars is just get to know our speakers a little bit better. Uh, the mm -hmm. families also always just kind of enjoy knowing who you are. And so um, the first question is, can you tell us a little bit about what drew you to the field of genetics? Um, yeah, good question. So um, <laughs> uh, I, I did med school, of course, and... Um, uh, started to do uh, genetics afterwards and um, at that time it was a, really a field that was really um, well in motion there, there was a lot going on there were a lot of new techniques and it was really exciting time to to start doing uh, genetics so um, to give you uh, an idea so um, our department now consists of about 400 people working at the genetics department. So it's, it's uh, the clinical department, the medical, the, the, the DNA diagnostics, but also the, the, the researchers. And actually um, some of my colleagues, they, they work well um, at the department for many years, but they can, they, they sometimes they tell about, so how they started and they started actually with 10, um, Ten colleagues, so it's 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 a, it's it's massive. So there's a huge increase in knowledge, and I started at a very interesting time when when we started to do uh, uh, the microarrays, so we could really dive into genetics, and 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 um, so that is how we actually um, discovered uh, the, the 70 Q2 or microdeletion. So at that time, that was really special to 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 find these small deletions. And they they, have, they had nev never been seen before, and and what the cool thing about going to freeze was was that that we actually um, identified the, um, the 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 DNA um, the genetic defect actually so the, the the part that is missing before we actually recognized uh, the, the the clinical signs and symptoms so that that was really novel. That's really exciting. I mean, it does feel like based on what you're saying about just the, the increase in um, just the field itself. And I, I feel like we're also seeing it too, just as families where people are now having a greater ability to discover um, that they do have this genetic syndrome where, you know, many of the older families weren't able to, to, to find this out for a long time. So it's, it's nice to see that families can really get answers early now. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so we started with the um, the, the microarrays, but but the, now we, we we do exome sequencing in in a, in a real really uh, early stage. And so a lot of children with um, just uh, well just that are born with um, low muscle tone, they will get an um, exome sequencing, and then the diagnosis will be made. So it, it's um, it's it's for sure that the diagnosis will be made uh, much earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you, because I know we're going to talk a lot about science and research today, so can you tell our families just a couple of interesting or fun facts about yourself that are totally unrelated to science and research? Um, well, yes. So perhaps I can show two of my children. So the, 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 <laughs> my cool kids. So let me see where they are. They're sitting at, at this. So can you just show it? Oh, hello. Are you seeing waving? You, you can this? tell them 103 people plus all of Facebook just waved at them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah. so, so if uh, three children, um, so the one waving, he's 12 years of age and he started high school this year and um, the others are um, seven and, 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 and ten. So uh, they are well, um, really proud That's of wonderful. course. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Well, thank you for introducing us. Yeah, and I, I do also a lot of running. Uh, so, Bert did, did a marathon, but I ran a half marathon tomorrow. So today. So that's oh, wow. not. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get to the marathon <laughs> yeah. someday. Yeah. Wow, that's really impressive. Well, thank you for sharing and introducing us to your your sweet family. Um, you know, another thing that families have asked about is, you know, many of us have had um, the fortune to, the good fortune to meet you in person. So, you know, because we've had these patient advocacy summits, we've been able to see you and hear from you live. And hopefully we'll get to do that next summer for sure in mm -hmm. person. But what is it like for you, you know, when you're, you're spending so much time in a lab researching this syndrome? What's it like for you to actually meet the children and the, the grown cool individuals and their families in person? Yeah, well, that's really impressive. So, so um, as a clinical geneticist, I, I don't do that much uh, really lab work. So I, I do see okay. a lot of um, uh, uh, patients or, or individuals at our outpatient clinics. Um, but of course, meeting all the, 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 the KDVS kids is really special. and, it, and and it really uh, shows how important it is and how much it is appreciated what we do. So, and, and that's, a, that's a huge motivation to, to uh, go on with doing research and motivate others um, uh, to, 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 to start um, doing uh, other uh, types of research. So um, uh, I'm really glad that we now in, in eye making we have uh, we, we cover all aspects of research uh, to the clinical research, but also with Neil doing the, mm -hmm. the very fundamental um, um, uh, lab work, so the fundamental uh, research. But then again, it's it's all it's always about the children, right? It's not a, not just about the, the 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 cells growing, and you always have to to look what is what is the meaning of what we see in in the dishes and in the lab. What does it mean in in, in real life? So, um, and and that's I think that's so important that we do um, within one department. We do the fundamental stuff. We do the clinical stuff, and and and. Um, and the collaboration is really important. Yeah. That's really amazing. And, and, and we'll talk a little bit about this after your presentation in a while, but I, I do think just having your expertise um, and, and maybe just your advice for families, and we'll, I'd love to get to that in a bit about just, you know, what can families talk to their clinical geneticists about? I think that would be really, really helpful. Um, mm -hmm. Before you dive into your presentation, and maybe this is a part of it, but do you mind sharing with our families just how you met Dr. DeVries, um, just kind of the history of the syndrome and how you discovered it, because we do have a lot of families on the call today that are very new to their Colin DeVries journey. So if you can kind of integrate that into your presentation and then I will just go ahead at this time and just turn the screen over to you so you can share all of your great work. Great. 
Uh, yeah, well, it's it's part in my presentation, but um, so I started um, my PhD, so a PhD uh, study, um, and uh, Dr. De Vries was my supervisor. Um, so I did my PhD uh, um, um, looking for new uh, causes for intellectual disability. So and that was that exciting time when we had all these novel techniques, so a microarray, uh, other techniques like MLPA. Um, and um, so I did all the, the, then I was working in the lab. So, um, uh, and so th this, this was really exciting time to, 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 we tested a lot of uh, children with intellectual dis disability. So I actually, I tested a thousand of them and um, in, 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 in three, uh, um, well, I can remember, so, so, in three of these, 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 uh, these little wells, we identified the same deletion. And that was really exciting. So that was the first time that we actually saw the same genetic uh, um, um, uh, deletion in, 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 in different individuals. So um, back then, a lot of, there were a lot of all these little small deletions, but they, are, they were all different. And now we, we, we identify these, these overlapping and deletions. And then, um, so we, had, we still had paper uh, medical files. So I, I picked up all this, these medical files and looked at, at the pictures. And then I said, oh, well, wow. they look like they, they are similar or they, there's a lot of uh, overlap. And that was a really exciting um, moment. So, um, and, and that, that was, so we, we, we published on this in, in Nature Genetics, which is a very high impact uh, journal. And I think that was especially because this, this um, uh, change in paradigm. Para, uh, so, so normally, uh, so in, in the old days, so um, a syndrome was recognized because of the clinical features. And, and years later, the, the underlying genetic cause was identified. And now that was turned around. So we, we identified the genetic cause. And, and later on, we recognized that, that, that there, were, there were a lot of uh, clinical sim, um, similarities. Um, so uh, Alberto Fries is actually a good colleague of mine. So uh, he's sitting, I think, um, uh, two offices next to me um, so now we are actually colleagues so we, we are both working on on uh, on kdvs um, and, and and other syndromes other rare neurodevelopmental conditions of course um, but kdvs is always our um, main motivation and 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 we for for, for writing grants we we often use kdvs as, as the example how it works so um, with the, the, the parent particip participation and, and all the, the aspects, so the clinical work, the molecular work, et cetera. That's amazing. Well, I know um, probably on behalf of everyone who's watching, I mean, we're just, we're so grateful for you. I mean, grateful for the, the work you continue to do, but grateful that you found it and named it. And, and now thanks to that work, we have, you know, answers for our own family. So um, it's just really, really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I'll turn it over to you if you want to share some of your research and then, um, or in, just some of your work. And once you're done with that, then we'll dive into the rest of all of these great questions from the families. Perfect. Yeah, and perhaps I, I, I answer some of them already, but. You probably will as you go too, I bet. <laughs> look. Can you see my presentation? Yes. Um, so today, um, uh, well, I'm, I'm really uh, excited to talk to, to you all. Um, um, I will talk about the clinical aspects of uh, code and free syndrome or KDVS. They will we'll also briefly address the underlying genetic uh, mechanisms and issues that are important in genetic counseling, such as the prevalence and, and germline mosaicism. Um, an important take home message is that parent engagement um, is indispensable for the understanding uh, um, and delineation of, of, of um, 
uh, a rare clinical condition such as KDPS. Um, KDPS, or is also called the micro, uh, 70Q2 or microdeletion syndrome, is a true multisystem neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by low muscle tone, so hypertonia, developmental delay, intellectual disability, um, uh, um, expressive lang language uh, speech delay is, is uh, apparent in, in many children, epilepsy, but also uh, multiple uh, congenital malformation in, in several organ systems, such as the kidney and the brain, musculoskeletal um, uh, problems, such as the curvature of the spine, the scoliosis, hearing defects, visual uh, problems, um, ectodermal features. So ectodermal uh, features are, for example, depigmentation of the skin, eczema or, or um, dental problems. And um, um, some characteristic facial features. It is important to stress that not all features are present in all children. In this um, graph, I plotted the number of features that is described in KDVS and the percentage of children with that specific uh, feature. Um, so you can clearly see that most features are, are present in, in less than 50% of children. So it's, it's really about um, a set of clinical signs and features that characterize KDVS. So not one or two specific features, but a set of um, features that characterize um, uh, KDVS. The variety of medical signs and symptoms in KDVS might come as a come as a surprise if you have a look at the underlying um, uh, genetic genetics. In all children with KDVS, the cancel one gene is actually not working, either um, by deletion of the 70Q21 deletion, including the cancel one um, gene, so it's simply not there, or by a mutation within the gene itself. In both cases, the result is the same. The cancel one gene does not work. In one of our studies, we compared the clinical signs and symptoms of a group of children with KD with the 70Q21 and the lesion and children with the mutation uh, within the cancel one gene. But we couldn't find true significant differ differences. So both groups are the same. So the, 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 the clinical signs and symptoms we call the phenotype and the, the, the genetics is called the, the genotype. So we couldn't see a direct relation between the genotype and the phenotype. Moreover, there is no direct relation in the size of the deletion and the symptoms. The exact size of, um, that is reported in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the files might vary a little, but in most children, the, the breakpoints are within these yellow and orange blocks, so-called low copy repeats or, or LCRs. Please, please bear in mind that, that the, the, the um, results of the, the test might seem very precise, um, but it's, it's really um, hard to pinpoint the exact um, uh, deletion boundaries. Uh, due to technical limitations of the test itself. Um, but in most cases, uh, the, the, the deletion site will be um, uh, almost the same. And then again, the deletion size does not really matter um, because there's no direct relation um, uh, between the, the deletion size and, and the, the extent and, and um, the signs that are present. Most important thing is that the cancel one gene is within the uh, within the deletion. The LCR, so the low copy repeats, are important in relation to the incidence. So, in other words, the probability of occurrence of uh, KDVS in a certain population. So, the precise incidence of KDVS is unknown. And we estimate the incidence of the 70Q21 um, lesion uh, at about one in 55,000 individuals. Calculation of the prevalence of individuals 
individuals with a pathogenic cancer one variant is even more difficult. Um, it cannot be determined with precision yet, owing to the limited numbers, but it might be as frequent as the deletion. Um, but more studies are needed to, to, um, to come to an unbiased uh, incidence. Um, KDVS, and especially the 70Q21 deletion, is uh, more prevalent in Western countries. Probably this is due to the um, availability of novel techniques, uh, for example, uh, exome sequencing and microarrays that are quite expensive. Uh, but there is another explanation, and that is the difference in the genetic architecture. I will show you what, you, what I mean. Um, the region that is missing in KDVS uh, can be flipped around in healthy individuals. And this is called the so-called um, H2 inversion or a H2 lineage. And it has been shown that the inversion is always present in at least one of the parents of a child with KDVS. So in fact, the H2 inversion is a necessary uh, factor for the deletion to occur. Um, the H2 inversion is more common in uh, people from European descent compared to, uh, for example, uh, people from Asia or, or Africa. Uh, and this might explain um, that there are more children with KDVS in Western countries, uh, such as the US, uh, Europe, and Australia. Um, however, there's no need to test for the H1 or H2 lineage. It's a, it's a really uh, common, so we call it a polymorphism, and apparently there are a lot of other factors that uh, influence um, um, uh, the occurrence of a deletion. Um, individuals uh, who uh, have a 70Q21 deletion themselves uh, or a pathogenic cancer one mutation uh, have a 50% chance of transmitting genetic alteration to his or her child. Um, and KDVS um, is, is pre present uh, or, or occurs equal with equal frequencies in males and females. And the clinical features are apparent in all individuals with a deletion or a pathogenic variant. Um, although, although uh, as shown before, the extent and severity of the clinical signs vary among individuals. Um, the overall chance uh, for parents to have a second child um, with KDVS is approximately 1%. This is mainly due to um, uh, germline mosaicism. Germline mosaicism means that the sperm or egg uh, have a 70Q21 deletion or cancer one mutation that is not present in other tissues of the body. Um, so the mother in these two families could have been the father, but in these, these cases it was the mother. Um, indicated by the, the, the circle with the bluish dots. Um, she has the 70Q21 deletion in the egg cells, but not in the other cells. And she did, didn't have any signs of KDVS. Um, so that is, that is uh, called uh, um, mosaicism. Um, but the chance to have germline mosaicism is, is, is really low. So the overall chance for parents to have a second child with KDVS is also low, so approximately 1%. So now let's continue with some details on the clinical signs and symptoms. Um, for this, uh, parent engagement is really important. And um, obviously you are the expert on your child and Clinicians and, and researchers have to be the expert on the group. So we have to collect and summarize and interpret the data. And in order to do so, the GENIDA database was uh, launched. Um, it's a registry that allows parents to enter and update clinical information on their child based on a structured clinical questionnaire that is available in, in, in multiple languages. 
So the United database now consists of over 200 individuals with KDPS, uh, and almost 50% is from the United States, but also from France, uh, um, Australia, the Netherlands, UK, and other countries. Um, males and females are equally distributed, and approximately 18% um, uh, is uh, 18 years of, or, or older. So it's important to note that we can compare the, the data of KDPS kids to data from other children within the United database, allowing us to identify uh, unusual patterns in the KDPS cohort. For example, um, laryngeal malacia and pneumonia, pulmonary infection, are uh, overrepresented um, uh, items in children with KDVS. Um, problems during pregnancy and neonatal and neonatal periods are very common in KDVS, such as reduced fetal movement, low amniotic fluid, um, C-section, uh, low muscle tone, so the hypotonia and feeding difficulties in the neonatal period. Low muscle tone and feeding difficulties are one of the, the, the key features of KDVS and present in the vast majority of all children. Um, overall, the EPCAR score, so it's the, the one to 10 score given to newborns five, and one, five and 10 minutes after birth is relatively good. Um, the motor milestones or developmental milestones are slightly uh, delayed with an average of, uh, for example, sitting at, at 11 months, standing at 17 months and uh, walking at um, 23 to 24 months of age. To be aware, again, um, of the wide spectrum. So here, for example, you can see it here. So this is the, the, the spectrum suit. Some do uh, really well, uh, while um, other uh, children need more time to achieve uh, certain milestones. Um, besides hypotonias, uh, speech and language is one of the key features of KDVS. Um, there's delay in speech development um, with uh, onset of first words being over 12 months delayed compared to uh, typical development. Um, children with KDVS say they are first words at uh, two years and two uh, months, so on average, of course. And this is a, a later compared to, to uh, for example, another um, neurodevelopmental disorder uh, such as KVG. So we, we compared it to other syndromes. But um, um, before children with Klesler uh, syndrome, another syndrome that, that, we, that, that we are working on. Um, so there's a lot of going on on this slide, but we'll um, show you the, the, the main conclusions on, on speech, reading and, and, and writing. Um, we can conclude that speech ability increases over time as 50% uh, of KDVS patients over 13 years of age are reportedly able to use full correct sentences. Um, we also do report a favorable evolution of the reading abil uh, ability over time. The 66% of children over 13 years of age are reported to have good competencies. Um, dyslexia and dyscalculia have only been reported in eight children. Uh, writing skills um, appear limited even uh, at a later age, as only 50, uh, 25% um, over 13 years of age are able to, uh, to write. Um, epilepsy, so if you talk to Ken Myers, he can talk a lot about epilepsy. It's present in 46% uh, and most frequent types of seizures are uh, Cromwell um, uh, seizures, so tonic-clonic seizures. Absent seizures and complex seizures are reported as well. So it's a, a whole list of different types of, of epilepsy. Um, we calculated the, the, the average age of onset, so the, 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 the first signs of epilepsy. And that is on, on average um, uh, about 
uh, four years, so with a median, median of, of um, uh, three years. So meaning that, that um, 50% of the children have um, epilepsy before three years and 50% um, later. Um, pulmonary problems have been reported as one of the major uh, medical problems that affect the children's health and quality of life in the open questions of the Genida questionnaire, especially the high frequencies of various um, respiratory infections was, um, to me, it was unexpected. Um, it notably includes pneumonia that often leads to hospitalization, usually starting um, during the first years of age. And other respiratory problems include asthma and bronchitis. And as mentioned before, laryngomalacia is reported in many children. And that's actually the, the, the congenital softening of the tissues of the larynx, so the voice box above uh, the vocal cords and can cause um, uh, serious breathing uh, problems. Um, so behavior problems are reported um, in KDVS as well, so including repetitive behavior, stereotypes, obsessions, attention deficits, but also hyperactivity. So uh, again, a range of, of behavioral problems. But then we, we compared all these, these problems, the behavioral issues with other syndromes within the Genida database. And then again, you can see uh, that there are significant, significantly uh, less frequent in KDVS compared to the, to the other children with the Genida database which is in line uh, with the overall happy and cheerful uh, sunny disposition of KDVS children. And this is actually, uh, so it's Anna, and she's one of the, the first three um, uh, children that we identified with KDVS. So, um, and again, a very cheerful and happy uh, person. Um, so there's, of course, there's a lot more to tell and, and there's a lot um, uh, still to be done, especially in depth, uh, detailed clinical research in order to come to KDVS specific management and, and surveillance. Um, there's ongoing work done on speech and communication together with Angela Morgan, on epilepsy with Ken Meyer, and we are in the final stage, on, uh, stage of a study on scoliosis, and we will start a study on ocular manifestations in KDVS in collaboration with a group uh, in Israel. Um, uh, you can see. So um, for now, I would like to um, uh, conclude with a big thank to all the parents and families. Uh, I, I truly think that parents are the experts and data from the families and parents are really informative. Um, we have seen that KDVS is a multi-system disorder. Uh, many systems are involved. And uh, um, then again, so not all features are present in all individuals. Um, moreover, Genida is a great tool to collect clinical information. So I would like to uh, invite you to, to go to the Genida website and, and fill out a questionnaire. Um, so finally, I would like to thank my colleagues who contributed to this work and uh, thank you all for listening. I think I'm exactly on 20 minutes. Yeah. Yes, right on, yeah. right on the dot. Right on the dot, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny, I, as I was, um, you know, kind of uh, referring to some of the questions we have as you were going through your presentation, it's, and it's like you got a whole bunch of them ahead of time. You know, you answered so many of the questions in your talk that had come in from families. And so I think that was really helpful. We still have a lot more, but, um, but you definitely covered a lot of it. So um, I, I know that was probably yeah. really helpful for everyone watching. Yeah. So if you don't, if you don't mind, I'd love to just kind of just go through as many of these questions from our families as we can. And, um, you know, and, and I, I do want to mention, as, as you pointed out as well, you know, as we, as we do these summits and we do additional webinars with some of your colleagues, um, we'll, we'll really continue to get into the details, like you said, around speech and around seizures and some of those neurological things. So um, just really want to encourage everyone who's watching, you know, if you can attend our virtual summit, 
Um, as we release more details on that, it will be a great opportunity to kind of hear about all of the work uh, this great group of, of doctors is doing. So um, with that being said, um, you know, one of the things that came in from our questions, we've got a, a lot of questions around developmental delay. Um, and can you explain what it is about KDVS that actually causes the developmental delay? I mean, I know you covered it a little bit in your talk, but um, if you could address that a little further, that would be helpful. Dr. Yeah, well, Poland, before you get yeah. started, do you mind um, closing your PowerPoint so we can sure. see your face a little bit more? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thanks, Ash. Yeah. Yeah. It's better? Or worse? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, well, it's a, it's a very good question, of course. And, and uh, so, as I already stressed, that the genetic cause is actually quite simple. So, it's just the GANS1 gene is not there. Uh, and then there's a, a huge variety of, of uh, signs and symptoms that are present or not. And some do have, they, they do really well, and some have more difficulties. Uh, so, the effect, the final effect, is differs. We can also uh, see that, and so, um, and that is actually the work we are done with uh, on on the, on the iPS cells, and and we try to understand what is going on. So, mm -hmm. what is the, the mechanism underlying the the um, the condition? So, the genetic cause is, is clear, but what 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 is the effect of that? That's the lesion or the mutation in the cancer one gene. So what, what, what is going on in the cells and in the development? Um, but then, so there, there, are, there of course, there are um, many different uh, syndromes and conditions. And, and we, we see in, in all, actually all these conditions that, that the clinical spectrum is, is pretty broad. And, and then again, that is not that surprising because um, well, uh, all children are different, and and um, yes, they 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 all miss that cancel one gene, but there are a lot of other factors that influence the 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 final outcome. This can be uh, genetic factors, but there are a lot of other factors as well. So environmental uh, factors, um, and 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 also the the. the, the Love for care of all the parents, uh, so there, there, there's a lot of, and I think that's that's the, the, the positive. Um, what I've really learned from from seeing a lot of children with KDVS that they they can achieve a lot. So I I have seen syndromes or children with specific syndromes, and parents are really um, trying everything, but it's simply not there. So. So the, the children are not able to to pick up all uh, um, every, everything that they, they they learn, and that's that's the good thing in KDVS. So there, yes, the, the development is delayed, but that actually the the final uh, stage is is pretty high. Mm -hmm. Well, and it sounds like too what you're saying is just that. Um, from what you've seen with this syndrome compared to others, that you know, because a lot of the parents are doing therapy. And like that is working, that you're seeing good success among these children with, with various therapies and they are progressing some. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's why we compared it, for example, with Glaser syndrome. It's, it's, um, it's very similar from a, a genetic point of view. It's really similar. So Dr. Uh, Neil Nadif Kashi is, is also looking on Glaser syndrome cells. And so we and the, the mechanism is the same. So it's for us, it's, it's good to do to, to benchmarks different uh, syndromes. Um, and then we, we can clearly see that the, the children with Glaser syndrome they have more speech uh, problems, but it's um, uh, in, in, in Cota de Free syndrome, it's, it's really delayed. And we think, well, doing a lot of therapy, it really pays off. So it, it takes a lot. Um, the, the, the children are really eager to, to communicate, um, um, really happy to, 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 very social. And I think that there are very positive um, uh, features. Yeah, and, and a question we got to a lot was just around um, 
be adults with Coulomb debris syndrome. So a couple things based on that. First of all, do you find that most of the symptoms that individuals are going to have really are there at birth or, I mean, I know you said with seizures, kind of the average age, age those may occur is three to four years old, but do you feel like by the time they're kind of getting into adulthood, they've kind of really seen a lot of the symptoms that are going to manifest? Yes, that's true. So it's it's a developmental condition. So it's not a progressive um, condition. Uh, for example, the, the metabolic conditions you can see really in, in uh, um, the, the children decline. So in here, it's it's it's, it's a slower um, a development, but it's not uh, that that that, that um, when they get older that they will lose specific things that they can. Um, perhaps there are a couple of things to say. So, for example, the the, the epilepsy. Um, so that might occur. So, but also at young age. So, uh, on average, about three four years. Um, uh, the scoliosis is something probably because of the the low muscle tone. So that can uh, develop on uh, at later age. So that's something mm -hmm. to, to to bear in mind. Eh? So that we have a look at at the, at the spine because it can uh, give problems, give rise to problems. Um, Angela Morgan, um, so she, she, she's seen a lot of children and, and what, what she mentioned that, that some older children, they, they start stuttering. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that might be something that appears later on. And, um, and I think the, the behavioral problems might also come a little bit later. This is not really a behavioral problem, but um, so, and it's, it's, it's not KDVS, it's just, I think it, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's all true for, for everybody. So that when you're getting older, so you're more aware of specific things that, that people ask or, or that you can or cannot do. And, and some of the children, the, the, they, they get a little bit anxious or, or um, a little bit obsessive behavior is, is more prevalent in the older um, children. So I think that's, that's Someone... but, but, but now we are aware of, and I think, so a lot of the, the older children, the, 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 the adults at this moment didn't get, well, some did, but, some didn't get all the attention and, and therapies that mm -hmm. many of the children get uh, right now. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, if, if someone asked out of curiosity, what's the um, oldest individual that you've encountered with cool and debris at this point? I think, um, so we reported on a, a female, she was um, 52 years of age from Spain. Okay. So she, she will be 56 right now or something like that. Um, and there are a couple of, so there is an Italian um, paper uh, from uh, Marcena uh, Zolino from Rome, and they reported on, on um, um, a group of uh, adults with KDVS. Uh, but I, I can look it up, but I think the oldest is, is, is about 50. Okay, that's really interesting. Um, and then a lot of questions came in around just commonality of the symptoms, which you which you discussed almost all of them. Um, just one other one: Have you seen any link between KDVS and melanoma? Uh, yes, it's also a good question. So, um, so you also always have to 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 um, look. So some features are really common, and some mm -hmm. are really rare. And 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 um, uh, some are so rare that you can question, well, is it part of KDVS or is it just coincidence? But for some really rare uh, conditions, such as melanoma, it's it's such a severe condition that we, we 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 have to be really careful. Also, with a very rare condition like melanoma and KDVS, so we we did. Um, uh, noticed that that some of the children get a melanoma at quite young age, and that's that's um, um, well, that's really rare. Childhood melanoma is really rare. So when it 
appears uh, or it, it's present in KDVS in three or four cases, it's, it's, it's far more than you would expect. Um, so um, I have a, a pathologist in, in Utrecht, in Nijmegen, and she's really um, um, an expert on melanoma, childhood melanoma, yeah. and, and she, she's, uh, she would be happy to, to have a look at, at, the, at the actual melanoma tissues, because there's, a, you, well, I'm not an expert on that, but she can do a lot of investigations on that, so to, to see whether there's a, a common link and what is the link with mm -hmm. KDPS. Uh, but it's really hard to get all the samples. As I, I, believe me, I've, I've, I tried. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's really hard. Uh, uh, actually, mm -hmm. I, I need a, a, a student, full-time student to get all the DNA samples and the consent and stuff like that. So that's, that's the problem at this moment. Yeah. Dr. Kulin, is the best way, um, so when families encounter these things, whether it's melanoma or, or something else that maybe seems a little bit rare, do you, do you encourage them, as you discussed, to enter that, all that information into Genida? Or, I mean, what's the best way for people to make you aware of these types of things that are occurring? Yeah, so I, I get a, a lot of emails, and that's always good. But I think the Genida, the database is also important, especially with all these rare um, uh, features. And um, the good thing is that it's a structured um, form. You can, well, it can be improved. I'm, I'm aware of that. Um, but but still, it's it's the, the data is is solid, and and um, and we go through all the open question uh, um, fields and, and pick out, for example, pneumonia was really striking that a lot of uh, parents uh, fill that out um, without us uh, asking. Um, and, and so there will be other um, very rare conditions. Yeah. Great, well, we'll continue to encourage our families um, to reach out and, and like I said, just to, to fill in the database because we know that that's, yes. that's how we'll ultimately get answers. Um, you know, that, so as I, we have 11 minutes left, I want to turn our attention to a, a few more things. Um, first of all, we got a lot of questions around as you all do research and, and in your ongoing research, do you think we will ever reach a point where there are even additional treatments um, or some type of, you know, quote unquote cure? Yeah, so. Um... So treatment is, is, is also very broad. So I think we, we, when we, for example, with Angela Morgan, when we come to, and also a speech uh, therapist at in Nijmegen, we also, we are all also working on so what is now, what is exactly the this, this speech problem in, in KDVS. So you can get dedicated, KDVS dedicated speech therapy, um, which is really important. Um, mm -hmm. Also for the, the, the epilepsy, some children, uh, they get epilepsy and it can be treated easily. But there is a group of children that have very severe epilepsy and, and they, they, it's really hard to treat. It's, it's a my, majority, but it's, it's, it's important to, to, to know what is the best uh, way to, to, to handle with these very severe uh, form of epilepsy. So it's, it's a management of symptoms. Um, when you're talking about cure or treatment, um, we often think about, uh, so really getting at the, at the gene level. Um, and well, uh, I think, so I, I'm, I'm hopeful, of course. And, and we are doing all these, these the IPS studies and the cell studies, and we do have a lot of leads, so, so we have, compounds that can actually restore the, the problems within the cells. Um, but, the, but again, um, uh, children are not individual cells. It's, it's a, a, a much more complicated than that. Um, and so when we are, we, we might get to, to a point that we can start treating children, then it's really important to have the clinical data. Um, I, I cannot stress that enough. So we need data over time as well. 
because what are you exactly going to treat and how will you say this this medicine uh, worked or not and then it's important because the spectrum is that broad you have to see you have to, to treat a, a huge group of children and see whether overall they, they start speaking earlier or there's less epilepsy and but it, so to to get to um, get outcome measures on a clinical level also the, the getting collecting a lot of clinical, clinical information is, is important what would what would your advice be for those families that are you know newly diagnosed you know just starting their journey and maybe they're they're heading into their first appointment with their clinical geneticist any, anything that you could, could advise them on that would help them get through that appointment in a, in a meaningful way? Yeah, so um, I think uh, the good thing is that there are a lot of um, uh, medical re uh, reports at this moment. Um, so a lot of the, the clinical geneticists um, and, and other pediatricians and child neurologists read um, the um, um, the gene reviews. So it's it's um it's a web page. It's freely available. Um, it's um, it's actually an overview of of um, a lot of rare neurodevelopmental conditions. And uh, I've written the the KDVS entry, and it actually summarizes um, a lot of the the the, uh, the research that has been done at the moment. So. Um, I think a lot of clinicians will read the, the gene I do for syndromes that uh, I'm not really, um, uh, uh, well, not very, um, I don't know a lot of uh, about, so I, I, I will read uh, the re gene reviews. Um, I think it's, it's really important for new families to get to know the other families. I, I, think, I think that's very valuable. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's that's the most important, actually. And we have a lot of um, you know aunts and uncles and grandparents and friends, you know, on the on the call too. And and that was actually a question we also got was how do I how do I support my loved one, you know, or or my niece or my grandson that's newly diagnosed? Any advice for how those who maybe aren't the parents can also support these families and kids? Yeah. And so. Yeah, well, uh, it's, I'm always um, um, well. It, also, at the me at the meetings, I'm, I'm so um, it's so nice to see all the families, so the grandparents, but also the siblings. Not not to forget. Um, I think it's really important to to um, also to talk to them uh, about um, um, a brother or sister with with, with special needs. Um, I think that's really important. Um, but I think you're doing great. Um, it's 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 about supporting, um, um, just doing normal things, and, and uh, um, it will take time. And it, it, you, it, it, but I think um, yeah, well, you're doing great. Uh, awareness is 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 important, of course. Um, getting um, more and more awareness about KDVS, but I, it's, it's step by step. And I think um, we already achieved a lot. In the last few minutes we have with you, um, I guess two research questions. I guess, first of all, is there anything regarding the research you're currently doing that we haven't talked about, but that you want families to know? So I'll ask you that one first, and I'll have one more follow-up. Yeah, um, so we'll start um, so uh, uh, with a um, study on ocular uh, problems manifestation in KDVS. Uh, so I do um, realize that we we'll, we 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 send around a lot of questionnaires, but well, actually that's the, the only uh, option. Um, and also we we uh, we have to. Uh, get the, the clinical information back from the pediatrician or the, the, the eye doctors. Um, and for all these studies, we need written consent, of course. So we'll bombard you with all these consent forms, and but it's really important. Um, 
so we're we are looking into the, the the scoliosis the eye the, the epilepsy but but for example um, heart problems the urine your genital problems there are a lot of other fields that has uh, that, that we have to um, dive into and, and we need experts on that as well and, and um, a lot of people uh, ask me so what do i have to do with that specific uh, feature but then we really need the expert opinion and and um so that's so i'm more more a manager i think so i, I try to uh, encourage uh, and, and um all the, the specialists and and, uh, and and focus on kdvs and then lastly, is there anything, because um, people really want to help support search however they can, is there anything that you're currently taking volunteers for um, or any other ways that people can support the research? Um, well, I think so. Um, when I have a look at, at the United database, so sometimes I, I um, so, so um, having a database like that, it, it, nowadays it, it, it looks really old fashioned. So when you have a look at, at all the beautiful commercial websites, this is really um, on the shoestring. So, so it, it, it's, 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 and it's, it's not, not a problem because the data is good. But I think uh, also the parents, they can um, look at it and just be critical. So when you think this, this is a really odd question or uh, it's not phrased, uh, um, um, well, you, you can phrase it differently. Um, so please contact us or the United database. So um, I think we can improve um, the, the questionnaire uh, a little, perhaps improve the, the visualization as well. I'm really uh, working on getting um, um, a publication out of the Genida database because it's, I think it's really important to have, to have it out there. We have tons of nice graphs and, and I think it's really important also for, for new families um, to have a paper like that with a lot of supplementary uh, uh, nice graphs and bring it to your pediatrician and say, well, you have to, to study on that. So. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I, I hate that we couldn't get to all the questions because there were just so many. And I know that some people even and put them in the chat today, but um, hopefully we'll get to talk to Dr. Coolen again. In fact, I think we'll get to talk to you um, as a part of a panel at the virtual summit this summer. So that will be yes. super exciting. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you uh, for joining us and taking time out of busy schedule to do this. Um, I know, like I said, I speak on behalf of all the families and the foundation. We're so grateful for your commitment uh, to research and to helping us find answers um, for our loved ones. Uh, we plan to have two more webinars leading up to our virtual advocacy summit. Um, and one of those is actually with Dr. DeVries. So that will yeah. be really, really exciting. Um, to learn more about KDVS, our Patient Advocacy Summit research, and how you all can get more involved with our organization, uh, please visit kdvsfoundation.org. We look forward to connecting with all of you again soon and just really appreciate you spending time with us today. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye, Dr. Thank you. Bye.